This Streamliner hit 261 miles an hour with two snowmobile engines. Bonneville Salt Flats SCTA certified G Fuel record holder. It shouldn't have worked, but it did. And ever since 2021, we've been chasing our next big goal, the G Gas record. And it's been four years of setbacks from blown up engines, bad air boxes, and a whole lot of head scratching. And a little bit of rain. Actually, a whole lot of rain. Now, I wasn't part of the original team that built Catzilla 2. But when they came to me asking if I could help them figure out why it was melting pistons, oh man, I had to say yes. I mean, this kind of project gets deep down inside your bones. I mean, come on. We have twin snowmobile engines, Bonneville salt flats, and a jet without wings. You had me at land speed record, man. Now, if you're wondering why anybody would build a Bonneville Streamliner with snowmobile engines, you've got to get to know Tom and Chuck. Chuck has been racing snow machines since the mid 70s. Full blown, ice drag racing, dead of the winter, Midwest racetracks with nothing else on his mind but racing. Chuck worked for his brother in the oil patch, and even he will tell you that he was his brother's worst employee every winter. Because <laughs> he was constantly trying to make his sled faster, trying to find a better clutching, and didn't have time to work. Chuck and his brother traveled all over to race. His brother would even fly out to events just to help wrench. It was that serious. In 1982, Tom joined the team. From that point on, them two were in it together for decades. January through February, every year, racing the local Wyoming events and finishing the season off at a big national event. Somewhere's in the Midwest. They weren't just showing up. They were winning. Chuck was crowned Drag Racer of the Year in 1988, winning open fuel, taking second in 800 open, and was undefeated in the Wyoming drag circuit. In 1990, the Nationals came to Wyoming and Chuck won open fuel again. <laughs> oh. That same year, they went to the Canadian Nationals and brought home yet another win. That's a Canadian World Championship. Oh, you did some <laughs> Canadian stuff too, huh? Yeah. I won that in... Vegreville, which is about a day's drive above Edmonton. This, this is 1990. Now, Chuck won't brag about any of this stuff. He's got a basement full of trophies, but he avoids the limelight. But if you can get him talking, it's like unlocking a vault of racer wisdom. salt flats and getting to know him on the other Dale Cutler built the cases in Orem oh. and shipped the fucking things to take so you had custom cased yeah three cylinders on the wall uh -huh. on the dealer so that that was a, that started life as a two cylinder 440 and it, then it got it so you took a case and a you took a case and a, a hole in three quarter, and then a one and three quarter to make it three cylinder. So, no, I, I, you lost me. You did so. You cut 
two different <laughs> snow machines apart to make yep. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it took two. It took two complete engines to build one. So mm -hmm. you two two cylinders to create a three cylinder. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> By the two, early two thousands, the ice drags were fading away, and hill climbs was the next thing. But Chuck wasn't interested. They started playing around with grass drags, but their hearts just weren't in it. And that's when things started to change. One night, Tom sketched out a wild idea on a bar napkin. No, it wasn't another sled. It was a streamliner powered by snowmobile engines. The sketch became the plan for what eventually turned into the first Catzilla. It's completely round like the roll cage all the way back. I think it's cool that he keeps it around, even though he'll never race it again. It still looks like it could be a lot of fun. At the same time, Hypoxia, our local 8th mile drag strip, was just getting started and Chuck converted one of his sleds into an asphalt dragger and Tom was right there with him. The ice racing days were behind them. But those guys weren't done chasing speed. They poured their time into helping build and running Hypoxia. Two of the main guys behind keeping the track alive. And somewhere in between all that, they kicked off a brand new dream. Going fast on the salt. They bought a chassis from Dave Tuttle, a dragster type sled car that would become the very first Catzilla. It was a great start, but not the final form. Back in 2021, before we took the G Fuel record, the car was running good, just not record good. The decision was made to run a fresh air system to the engines. Upon the next test down the track, it ran slower and the engines wouldn't run. Back in the pits, a friend of the team here in the story showed him a simple trick with a vacuum hose. And the next run, boom, 261 miles an hour. Record has been accomplished. But over the winter, they wanted something better. The cobbled up air box had done its job, but now they wanted something clean, sleek, and serious. The new design was called the reverse header, and it was nice. Smooth curves, polished tubes, symmetrical lengths. It had to be faster, right? No, it was 15 miles an hour slower, and nothing Chuck could do would get us to the record. So they went back and built a third setup. It was bigger, more volume, and kind of a clean version of the factory style airbox. It looked impressive. Except now, it's melting pistons. One on every run, and it's always in the same spot. By the time Chuck got enough fuel in there to keep that piston alive, we were several miles off the pace. We were close just not close enough to take the Jeep gas record. So I'm sure a few of you by now are thinking, why don't you just bring every, you know, bring it back to, with everything the same as it was when you got the record in 2021. And because, well, because both records are 261 miles an hour. So, if you can make 261 miles an hour on G fuel, you should be able to do it with G gas, right? No, and this is why. G fuel is a, you can use an oxygenated fuel. If you have an engine that you've tuned as best you can get every ounce of power out of it, and the only thing you change is going from a non-oxygenated racing fuel to an oxygenated racing fuel, you automatically get 20 to 30 horsepower 
and then you tune that fuel to your to your engine and you gain even more horsepower the g gas you can't use oxygenated fuel so we're starting the plane field 20 30 40 horsepower down and still trying to make the same mile an hour and chuck's not dummy as you've seen so far he knows how to build a, a race winning engine and he tuned them things up to make it make them run and it's obvious because with it melting pistons and jetting it up enough to where it quit melting them it was close to winning the record but you know it was several miles an hour off so you know them engines are they were built right and it's ready we just got to get these air boxes figured out now return you back to your regular program <laughs> and that's when i got involved last fall this winter i said let me see them air boxes i can build an adapter from my flow bench and we can test them and find out what's wrong and figure it out and fix them well it's july now of the next year speed week is august 1st and we got three guys working on this trying to get it right it's about 80 percent right but it took a lot of work to get to that point there was so many redesigns reshaping trying to figure out it was way more work than I ever thought it was going to be. But I'm very proud of what we've done. I even tested the fancy headers just to confirm what we felt. And it was bad. Like, really bad. I used a string to verify the airflow, or lack of it. And you could see the string getting sucked in one port and coming out the other. That design wasn't just inefficient. It had a reverse flow. <laughs> now the new air boxes, they're bigger, balanced, and, we're, and we've tested and retested every angle, every taper, every opening, and it's almost time. We've got just a few weeks left, and once these air boxes are finished, it's time to bolt everything together and head to Bonneville Speed Week, August 2nd. So that's where we're at. A streamliner born from a napkin sketch, powered by two snowmobile engines and backed by decades of racing grit from two guys who refuse to quit. <laughs> we got the chassis. We got the engines. And after several months of working on these boxes and redesigning and reshaping and reworking them, we just might have the right boxes too. If we're going to make the G-Gas record, everything has to come together. The power, the airflow, the durability, and maybe just a little bit of Bonneville luck. Will it be fast enough to take the record? Or will we be bolting up a heartbreaker? If you want to find out, hit the subscribe button and find out what happens next out on the salt. All I'd say is I think if we can get out there on half as decent condition, mm -hmm. I think that fucking record will shatter like a I, fucking... I, I, <laughs> so I keep telling everyone, I, I keep wanting not to say that because I don't want to put my shoe in my mouth and start chewing on rubber, but I think it's, I think it's a done deal. <laughs> if Mother Nature lets us go out there and yeah. run it, it's a done deal. Yeah. Godzilla's coming. There's, there's plenty of things that have changed for the better. Yep. I mean, when I hooked them air boxes up to my flow bench, I did not expect to see what I saw, and especially them header ones. Yeah. I mean, I told you about that, right? Yeah. Just hold the damn string right up inside the... Wow. Catzilla's coming. Catzilla's coming. Like I say, it might be wrong. Yeah, and the, we don't know. There, there, there could be a variable yep. that we have no clue about that's gonna kick us in the ass. But I don't think so. I really don't. I, I, I'm I think, pretty damn confident this is gonna work out well. I think, you know, I might be wrong, but I think we got enough smart fucking got people on here that I, I think that... <laughs>
Catzilla 2 is coming to you. Speed Week 2025.